Hey, Sharon. Hi, Eric. Good to meet you here on Facebook. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, too. Greetings, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this rainy day. Aren't you glad you're inside and not outside? Hopefully people uh, were able to stay home, have some soup or hot cocoa, and now you can sit back and relax. And Sharon, you know what it means that we're here for another week, don't you? What does it mean, Eric? It means that we didn't win the lottery. Oh, this is true. That's true. I know Eric and I talked about, you know, our having to retire from the show, from Anything Goes, um, you know, and from our other responsibilities at the temple. But alas, we did not alas, win. The, the, the $1 billion Mega Millions was, <laughs> was won by just a single person in Maryland. Good for them. Good, Good. for them. And Hopefully they'll support their house of worship. <laughs> Hopefully. I, I, I'm... I haven't made, uh, I haven't written a letter yet of uh, just touting Temple Israel and all that we do, but uh, we'll, we'll see if I can find that person's information and and, and so. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Hi to Jay and to Linda. We're glad you guys are here. Any of our other um, viewers would like to say hello in the chat. We'd love to greet you by name and know that you're sharing the afternoon with us. We're in for a really great conversation today with our friend and longtime congregant, Janet Liss. So I know that'll be a lot of fun. And so many of you out there, and I know Sharon, um, she's been such, Janet has been such a part of our community for so long. Um, and we'll find out even that growing up here at Temple Israel, which, uh, which I just found out about. So it'll be really exciting to hear her, her stories and her history and, and uh, what she's up to now. Indeed. Looking forward to that. You know, it. Um, I was actually surprised it rained. I didn't want it to rain this this uh, <laughs> this week. I, I was I was enjoying that one week or two weeks of sunshine that we had. But, uh, you said that you've looked at the weather report and it's not it's it's not going to rain the rest of the weekend. Is that the? I think we're clear for the rest of the weekend, which is great. All right, which is really important because we have something really nice coming coming up this weekend for Tour Center, and what's that? We do, on Sunday, after our Tour Center classes, which are virtual and uh, you know, online, we're having a cereal box drive-by um, at the temple where people can bring their boxes of cereal that they bought for the food insecure in our community. And anyone's welcome to bring by some cereal. So if you would like to be part of this Tour Center effort, we'd love to see you on Sunday afternoon from 12.30 to 2.00, we'll be out there collecting all the cereal boxes and they will be donated to food pantries within the community. If it's any size cereal boxes, I can go to Costco and get cereal boxes. Or I can go really, really big at the little baby ones. You know. All right, make sure I know, <laughs> I know um, Mel and I and our family, we're gonna be there making sure that uh, we're gonna be dropping off, dropping off some cereal and doing some shopping for it. So it's a, it's a great cause for Tour Center and, and uh, Tour Center continues to, to do fundraising and 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 Sadaka projects projects like this to, to support our uh, support those in need in our community. So. Yes, that's what I hope to, hope to see on Sunday if you'd like to come by. It's twelve thirty to two, right? Twelve thirty to two. Yep. All right. Be there, everybody out there. Be there. <laughs> So this past week, we had Tu B'Shvat, super fun, on Wednesday night and Thursday. And last Sunday, we kicked our Tu B'Shvat celebration off with our joint program with the AJCC. And that's been so much fun. I love Tu B'Shvat. I think it's one of the most underappreciated Jewish holidays. So, so we had a really nice Seder on Wednesday night. We had a lot of congregants who joined us online for that. And I know that our family had all of our um, Tu B'Shvat nuts and, and dates and fruits all cut up and ready to go. It was really nice. Was it any, um, was it sort of bittersweet? Because you know what an effort we put um, each year. Yeah. For everybody at home who knows, but but at the synagogue for, for both for Torah Center and for, for Joys of Jewish Learning, um, we really have done some some all out two Bishvat Seders. So. I was thinking about that so much. And I was thinking about you, Eric, because Eric in the past few years has taken over some of the shopping responsibilities for that. And, you know, on my shopping list, it says like 12 boxes of grapes. And Eric's like, 
12 boxes of grapes, you know, and that's too many. And they'll come back with like eight and, and it's, it's always enough. But yeah, that's where Eric and I have to balance each other out a little bit. Um, I'm sure they really missed you at Costco this year, Eric. I, 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 I've gotten letters of, of them like, where are you doing? <laughs> You know, trying to yeah. entice me to come back. I know. I mean, I missed like buying all of that stuff in bulk, right? The the dates, the figs, the you know, looking for the olives that still have the pits in them. The pits. All those That's, things. It's so hard to find those nowadays. Those it, are challenges. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. The green napkins, you know, whatever we needed for that too much about Seder. I was really missing it this year. And a shout out also to all of the parents who and and adults, adult volunteers have come in to help us prepare for those seders. You know, it takes a lot of effort to cut up oranges for 150 people. Yeah, so, but then I, I, when I, my thought and my, and my memories and my fondest memories of Tukashvat have really been uh, here at, at Temple Israel with, with all that, you know, all that you've brought and all, all that you've inspired with Tukashvat, so. Um, next year, I can't wait to be back hopefully and have all those kids singing songs and, yeah, and saying they don't like figs. <laughs> so you just say, try a fig, try a fig, try a date. Even if it's a fig Newton, they still don't like the fig. <laughs> it um, tastes like a fig Newton, yeah. Right. Um, but at least you got to drink the wine at home and uh, not worry right. about the, after the red, red or white grape juice. So you can, uh, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and believe it or not, Eric, we're talking about the next holiday. It's always the next holiday, right? It's like, we don't ever have too long of a break and plans well, are that in what, place That's what keeps fun. Judaism going, right? Like I there think we go. There, there, it, there's, there's always that next thing to push on to and, and to push right. on to. And, um, yeah, we're very lucky. I sometimes I do wonder about um, our other, uh, about our other, about other faiths and who don't, that don't have as many holidays. Like what do they, what do they do all year long? But we are never bored <laughs> and we are, Busy planning for Purim, which comes at the end of this, at the end of February. So in less than a, in less than a month, we'll be celebrating Purim. So be on the lookout for all those fun plans. Right. And um, yeah, it's going to be in our Kol Yisrael, uh, our monthly newsletter is going to be emailed out next week, uh, I believe on Monday. Uh, and it's going to have some of the, some of the things we have, some of the fun things we have planned for Purim. I know um, this year's theme is going to be um, dressing as your favorite villain. So, Ooh, yeah. so everyone can uh, look forward to Sharon's costumes because if you know Sharon, you know, we, we won't be disappointed. I'm sure we won't be disappointed. I have been working on that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're not Jewish, you know, it, 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 you, maybe you take more pride in, in Valentine's Day and President's Day and, and other <laughs> maybe. Jewish holidays are more fun. So yeah. we actually get to celebrate both of those. We celebrate mm -hmm. celebrate uh, Valentine's Day too. And Jews got Tuba Av as well, if you want to study. The <laughs> so we, 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 we can have, if you're out there and you're Jewish and you look at the holidays, you can have double the fun, right? You can. <laughs> so, um, and then we have a lot of also uh, JGL programming coming out for February. We do, yeah. I'm really excited about the class we have on Tuesday night, this next Tuesday on the 2nd, with Curtis Kaiser. He is a, an attorney, and he will be doing a wonderful presentation, a presentation for us about estate planning and thinking about leaving a legacy um, and how that legacy is not necessarily just a financial one. It's also a values-based decision and um, I mean, the lessons that you can really leave for the next generation. Uh, so please plan to join us on Tuesday night um, with, uh, with Curtis Kaiser. It should be great. Which is perfect timing also because for those at home, we are coming upon the temple's 97th birthday in just a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to have a special Shabbat celebrating the 97th birthday. We're going to have... Um, uh, we're going to have a couple of speakers. I know Harriet Ellis is going to be joining us doing candle lighting and sharing um, a memory. For those of you at home, um, we interviewed Harriet a, a few weeks ago, um, but Harriet um, has the pleasure of being um, the same years young as the, as the temple. And uh, so we, we, um, we are looking, looking forward to 100 years together in the next few years and celebrating 100 together and 
And then we also, in speaking of legacy, we have our, hundred, our next 100 year campaign um, as we encourage members to, to make sure that Temple Israel is here just as they're enjoying it now and just as um, like we're, we, we're gonna talk more about Jan Liss, about, about her growing up at the temple and how you have generations of families growing up at the temple. That only happens if those at home are, um, are willing to, to, to see the importance that Temple Israel has placed in their, has had in their lives and it held. And then, um, you know, sharing, sharing part of that, that giving and making sure that we're here in the future. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we have um, Musar, which is gonna, Musar study group is this week. We have our book group. I know Cantor Haas is also, um, her wine and tech study is uh, coming up this week for, and then um, the rabbi and, and uh, Michal Loving and um, rabbinical student Miriam, remind me of her last name? Um, um, is it? Hoffman. Oh, Miriam Hoffman, yes. <laughs> I had to think about them for a second. Yes, they, the three of them, Rabbi Loving, Rabbi Fox, and, and Miriam are all co-teaching the Introduction to Judaism class, which started a, a week or two ago. But if you are interested or know anyone who would be interested, it's not too late to join the class. It is a multi-week session, multi-week program, so they can still get in. Yep, it goes through May. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's not too late to jump in. Uh, tonight for services... Um, just so everybody knows, we have a, it's a very unique uh, service because we are collaborating with Temple Menorah, um, which is in Redondo Beach. And there's a reason we're doing that. It's not just, uh, it's not just, oh, let's find another temple. It happens to be the Bar Mitzvah weekend of Max Perler. And it so happens that Max's mother, uh, Kelly Cooper Perler, is the cantorial soloist at Temple Menorah. So she, her job is to lead Shabbat services over there. Um, we they wouldn't, wouldn't give her the night off. <laughs> we, they wouldn't give her the night off and we're like, okay, then how can, how can we, <laughs> slave drivers, they're, 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 you know, different than us, you know, they, they work people to the phone and, um, no. but anyway, so uh, we're really happy to, to be able to do a collaborative service with Temple Menorah um, so that, uh, so that Kelly can have uh, a joint Shabbat with our community and the community that she's leading. Um, and then uh, tomorrow morning is, is, is Max's Bar Mitzvah, which again, it'll sort of be a collaborative Shabbat weekend. Um, and the, the Zoom link uh, will be accessible to those families at uh, both the Temple Israel and the Temple Menorah as well. Yes, it should be a very joyous weekend for sure. <laughs> And then uh, Saturday night, we have Havdalah that's going to be led by Kendra. Kendra Yay. Yeah. Another guest on our show a few weeks ago. Yeah. You know, such, it's a very um, musical, it's a musical weekend. It's very fitting. This is Shabbat Shira. And um, we have Jan, Jan Liss with us to, to this, this afternoon, who is a singer. And then um, the bar mitzvah of, of Kelly's uh, son, this weekend and then tomorrow night, Kendra's leading us, another beautiful singer in our community. So perfect for, for this Shabbat. Um, which is a great lead in for bringing Jan on. Yes, let's bring her on. I know people are looking forward to this conversation. Let me get her in here. Jeez. She is. Hi, Hi Jan. Hi, how are you? Good, welcome to Anything Goes. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for asking me. I'm very honored. <laughs> Great. Well, so Jen, um, and so I, I never formally asked you, because um, I know people call you Jan and people call you Janet. Is there one that you prefer? When people meet me, I usually introduce myself as Janet. Um, but my people who know me better call me Jan. It's funny, there's a story around that. My father's name was Al, Albert. So when he went into the service, they called him Alice. My, his sister's name, and I'll wait on this one, his sister's name was Ruth. So she was ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I hate to be Janless because I, I feel like I'm not there. So if it's if I use my last name, it's Janet Liss. 
but if you just call me by my first name, it's Jan. It's fine. Either one is. Just don't call me late for dinner. I'm good. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad that I, I, I really appreciate the story behind that. That's that's <laughs> that's great. Um, for people out there, let me give uh, let me do a brief introduction of of who you are, and and then uh, we'll we'll get talking a little more. So, uh, for everyone out there. Janet Liss has been involved in Temple Israel since she was two years old. Uh, she began her career teaching at Temple Israel in 1971 as a music specialist and then moved to second grade and she taught that for 22 years. She loved teaching the seventh grade B'nai Mitzvah class and she did that for almost 20 years as well as the adult B'nai Mitzvah class. Jan served as the director of B'nai Mitzvah studies as well as the principal of the Torah Center prior to Sharon Amster Brown's ABLE leadership. In June of 2015, after 44 years, Jan retired as a Torah Center teacher, but she still enjoys teaching adult Hebrew classes. And when not teaching, Jan works full-time as the office manager at the Jack H. Skirball campus of the Hebrew Union College in Los Angeles. And she tutors students privately in Hebrew and Judaic studies. Jan is a proud mother of Rabbi Michal Moraro Loving. Um, but the title Jan values most highly is that of Bubby to her <laughs> precious grandson, Xander, Ari, and Connor Loving. We welcome, officially, Janet Liss. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. I love being here. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. It's a pandemic. I mean, our lives have changed, as has mine. Um, so. Uh, all things considering, as you can see, I don't sleep a lot. I'm, I'm looking at myself saying, boy, do I look tired. But I usually am tired, so it reflects reality. <laughs> doing OK. How are you guys doing? Well, you know, hanging in. We're, <laughs> we're doing what we well. can do. That's we, we can you know, do. We, we actually, I, I think we've talked about it before, is we, we love this opportunity of meeting our congregants. It also gives. Sharon and I a chance to um, to just have fun together, and it's one of the things we look forward most in our week, and we get a laugh and 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 chat and talk. So, well, I was looking forward to it because I'm saying maybe I won't wear a t-shirt today. So, <laughs> <laughs> it switch things up. <laughs> well, your 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 cleanliness um, is coming through the screen. You can tell <laughs> very fresh. And... Thank you. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> so with the pandemic are you um you said you're not you're not sleeping much and so what what, what is what's occupying your time are you are you up are you a reader are you watching I, i'm not a big say? reader i am uh, i like books on on tape um i've never been a big reader unless it's biographies although i read all the stuff um the political things i i do a lot of reading and short uh, short uh, pieces um, I read several political books this, uh, uh, in the last few years. Um, I'm catching up on some Netflix series that I enjoy that I didn't have time to before. I'm also still working um, at Hebrew Union College. Um, the good part for me, because it's giving my back a break from the long ride into the office, um, I don't have to drive. They're allowing us to stay at home. They really have done fabulous work and they're continuing to do fabulous work. Um, so I serve on three task forces for HUC and we meet, we were meeting weekly. Now we're meeting every two weeks and some of them are meeting monthly because things have changed. Um, so I do work when we get off here, I have some bills to pay. I got them, you know, email and, and things like that. I approve payroll because I'm the office manager at Hebrew Union College. Um, and, um, and anyone who might be watching this, I don't know if anybody actually is watching this, but do you? We, do. we, we it, have people. Oh, good. It, it, do not mix me up with Rabbi Janet Liss. She's in New York. Um, we're about the same age. We went through the same type of thing. But, you know, I remember when I was the uh, educator at Temple Israel, I would get her mail. She would get mine and we would exchange every so often. My daughter Very once funny. met her. My daughter once met her at a, at a rabbinical conference. And uh, apparently she said to uh, my daughter, Michal, she goes, oh, you're the daughter people think I have. <laughs> That's so, um, so I'm keeping busy. I, um, I do a lot of walking. Um, and so I, uh, I'm, I'm doing what are called virtual uh, missions. 
virtual walking. So I've walked um, virtually in Iceland with the team. I've worked, I'm, I'm walking right now the, um, uh, I actually wrote it down. Oh, the Cabot Trail, which is in Nova Scotia. And that's a short walk, that's only 186 miles. And you don't have to do it all at once, <laughs> you take your time. And I'm walking Route 66 with the team as well. And that is 2,280 miles and they send you uh, postcards along the way and you can see what you would be seeing where, you know, after X amount of miles, where you would be on the route. And, and that's kind of fun. And for every- That's what I was gonna ask is that, so there's a visual component too, so you- There is, there is. And that's kind of fun. I haven't been real interested. I'm not a traveler. I'm not into, I really don't care about traveling. I'm fine, send me a postcard, I'll be happy. But with, but because Route 66 starts in Chicago, which is where my parents are from and all the relatives that I felt very close to, and it's a walk from Chicago to LA, which is a schlep and I've driven that before. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I'm looking forward to getting the postcards. I'm only 2% along. Um, my, my partner in crime in that, it puts in six miles a day, I put in two and she says, it's a team, we're a team, it's okay. <laughs> she's gonna get to Chicago faster than you. We're a team, she's dragging me along. <laughs> but it's good. Really and fun, I, That's fun activity. It is, let me show you. I actually pulled these because I thought you might ask what I was doing. This is a, the, I, I get medals for this. Um, and this is the ring road. This is when we walked as a team in Iceland all around the perimeter of Iceland. That was 828 miles. So that one we did. And this one is, have you ever heard of the, the ritual? I mean, the religious Camino in Spain? I no? That. Well, um, pilgrims would, would still walk this Camino for religious reasons. Other people mm -hmm. just walk it to walk it. And it is from the Pyrenees to all the way through the to to it through Spain, and that is the Camino de Santiago, and I walk that one too, which is pretty cool. cool. That was that was only, what was it, four hundred, two hundred? I don't remember anymore. Um, it was long, <laughs> and this one I did on my own, um, and that one I did on my own as well. This one I really wanted to do just because. It was run for RBG and awesome. it was 87 miles, which these days for me, a former couch potato, um, I never just sat on the couch and watched TV. I was always busy, but it seemed like it. Um, that was 87 miles to honor how many years she lived. So that was kind of cool. And it's nice to have something, you know, in my hand to prove I actually did it. So I wasn't crazy. Right. So, and it's and it's important to do those things like walking and stuff to, to keep your mind and body healthy as we're you know as it is you're, you're you're not up and around and having to drive to work and, and do thank all god that. yes yeah so i'm trying to walk these rainy days i don't walk at all i just snuggle in at home and stay <laughs> as warm as i can <laughs> So. Jenny, are you just walking around the leisure world where you live or you go or do you drive someplace and walk? No, I, uh, well, I don't have a car. I, 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 um, I totaled my car last March. So it's been almost a year since I've had a car. So my neighbor here, whom I've known for over 30 years, she says, let's just be a team. I'll share my car with you. So I have her car on days and she has her car on days. But mm -hmm. no, I just walk around here. What I like about leisure world is that the, um, there are no, uh, uh, no driveways that I have to worry about going up. There's no um, uh, sidewalks that are up and down and pushed by, it's taken care of well. I like the, the, the evenness of it. And um, it's very pretty here. It's very, very pretty. So, and there are lots of things to walk. I probably only walked within four or five of the neighborhoods, but, and there's a, there's a lot of walking, there's a lot of pathways. So that, that keeps me busy and it's, it's pretty, as I said. That's great. It's an easy walk. I don't have to actually go through the Alps. To the <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting that you said you don't like to travel. Um, not that you're doing these walks that are getting you out, but the fact that, well, you, you grew up here in Long Beach. <laughs> you didn't travel far. I, I didn't go far. I haven't <laughs> you, gone you far. So, I, have, I have gone places, but I'm, you know, I'm not big on traveling. 
so was your fa- so your was your family it says you've been part of Israel since you were two correct uh, was your family has your family been uh, were they new to Long Beach when you became members at that point or um, were they also here in Long Beach prior to that they my parents came to California to Long Beach in 1955 uh, I'm sorry 1954 because talk about not needing a lot of change. They bought a house in Long Beach in what's called Lakewood Plaza, although it's Long Beach. Um, my father went in and it, they bought it as a, uh, a model. And they said, this is the location we want and this is you know what we want. So they went, she, my mother was pregnant with me at the time. So he went in and he came back out and said to my mother, we just bought a house. I gave them ten dollars deposit. I have to. I have to bring the other ninety dollars by the end of the by the end of the week. Okay. So that and I lived in that house um, for sixty three years. So wow. Uh, change is not huge. So when I change something, it's like major, you know. Um, so yes, they moved to uh, Long Beach in fifty four. Um, and then they, they joined Temple Israel in 55. My mother started teaching there. Rabbi Kelter had just become the rabbi. And she, my mom taught for over 20 years. And I grew up at Temple Israel. Um, and I'm, I'm, everything's going through my head, all the teachers I had, my goodness. Um, the, uh, uh, so I went through the Torah Center at that time. I went through the temple when it was when we had the fire in 1966 and they rebuilt it. My mother was a temple builder, and by that, and she also then she also worked in the office of Temple Israel. Um, and then uh, confirmation, and then uh, my last year in they had a they had a, a they had a high school Temple High School, and you know. We had a huge confirmation class. There were 60 kids in my confirmation class. It was huge. Well, we were the, um, uh, uh, what's I called? The- uh, Baby boomer generation. Baby boomers. Yes, exactly. So um, anyway, and then at 17, I started teaching at Temple Israel um, and I was the music uh, teacher. Anita Bard was my supervisor and I would go around and actually I would be in the, the youth lounge and play my guitar and teach the kids songs um, everywhere, you know, from kindergarten through through sixth grade. And then I moved to second, second grade and then I moved to, to it's funny because um, uh, Rabbi Lisa Hochberg Miller uh, at, after uh, I was teaching second grade for a very long time, she said, I'd like you to teach beginning Hebrew, fourth grade. And I said, I, I'm sure I can't do that. I have no idea how to do that. She goes, give it a shot. So <laughs> I, I said, okay. So I taught it. I really loved that teaching that class. And then the next year she say, I'd like you to teach the sixth grade class. Actually, I taught it for a few years, a couple of years. And then she said, I'd like you to teach uh, the sixth grade Hebrew. I said, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, give it a try. <laughs> and um and I taught that and I enjoyed it. And then soon she said, I'd like you to teach the B'nai Mitzvah class. And of course I said, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that for many years. And that actually teaching the B'nai Mitzvah class was one of my favorite classes, that and second grade. Um, so nice. Yeah, so I did that for many years. And now I still teach, her, I still teach uh, uh, you know, tutor B'nai Mitzvah students. So, so with, okay. with your mom, so you, it's the first time hearing too that your 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 mother was she was on staff here at, at the temple. She was she was on staff for twenty years, and my daughter before she became a rabbi was on staff I think for two or three years. So so were you a were you a staff brat? Were you was there <laughs> were, were you did you have a, a what was your reputation as a kid? Were you always as really into learning it and and or or were well, there times where you they had to hunt you down? And no, you know what? I was such a nice kid. It's pathetic. <laughs> I um, in our confirmation class, we had a, a book called I Confirm, and I hope Temple still has some. I have some copies. I turned some in a few years ago. So I had some extra copies just so we could have our history at the temple. And they would, 
prophesize uh, the the staff of, of this I confirm book were confirmands were were uh, you know fifteen year olds like I was, and so um, they would take all our names. One of the things in this book, and by the way, my mother was the editor of this book, <laughs> is um, and um, we would one of the things was like a prophecy or something. It was whatever, and it said so they would predict who we were. Mine was Snow White. <laughs> I, would, I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> I was, I was a nice kid. What can I tell you? I'm trying. I, don't tell anybody. I don't want to ruin my reputation. Right, right. <laughs> Were you always musical, or, or yes, that yeah. So, and was that from, was someone in your, was your mom or dad musical as well, or, or what? My did... mother sings, she has a lovely voice, and my mother, bless her heart, is going to be 97 in March. So I wish her the one, and, and she, we speak several times a week, we, we Skype, her brain is together, her vision is very, very bad, it's hard for her to see, but we Skype, um, and it's great. So my mother has a lovely voice, my daughter has a lovely voice. Um, I remember studying I remember being in kindergarten and I'm going to drop some names and I don't know if you know them, but if anyone's watching who is interested and have been around the temple for a while, they'll know this. <laughs> um, Shirley Saltman was my kindergarten teacher at Temple Israel. And she always told me, she goes, Janet, and she had her little hat on. She goes, Janet, I take full, I, I take full credit for your singing because she told my mother when I was four and five that she had a lovely voice. <laughs> And Jan and Harry Ellis is watching the show right now, and she's commenting about how much she, how fond of your mother she she was, and oh, that you guys, nice. they were dear friends. Oh, hey, Harry, love you. Thank they're both they're the same age. They're you know it's, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Harriet's Those... daughters Deborah and Claire and I grew up together. Deborah is one year older, and Claire is one year younger. I was I was the middle sister. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then, and then regarding music, Rabbi Kelter, when I was studying for my bat mitzvah, and at that time we would study with the rabbi, um, I was on the bima, and Mrs. Kelter was sitting in the, in the congregation in the pews, and she called him aside, he told me this later, he says, you know, she can sing, you should have her sing higher than she's singing, it's like, okay, so then I sang, and, uh, and I remember after my bat mitzvah, at the reception, Anita Bard was my bat mitzvah gift from my mother. Uh, my parents were divorced at that time and the gift was to take voice lessons. And I was, I was barely 13. I was 13, I was two days before my bat mitzvah. And I remember Anita Bard came up to me and she said, you have a lovely voice, you should take voice lessons. And I'm 13 years old. I'm saying, well, if I have such a lovely voice, why do I need lessons? <laughs> I learned why I needed lessons. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so that was great. And Rabbi Kelter was a mentor. In my confirmation class, we would write a lot of poetry. Jack Bard was one of our teachers. Um, uh, Mrs. Stein, what was her name, uh, was one of our teachers. We had, and so she, um, they would have us write poetry about certain things. And remember, we're talking, talking the time of, of uh, Vietnam War. So I wrote some saw, I wrote some poetry, as did other kids. They wrote prose or just wrote. And mm -hmm. Rabbi Kelter would look at them, and he said, "These are these are lovely." And then he'd hand them back. He said, "Put them to music." And I went, <laughs> "Oh, okay." So I did. Um, he was quite an inspiration and I, I didn't know I could because of course my first reaction to most things is I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so music was a, was a big part of my life. Do you still have any of those poems in your, in your archives? Of, of, uh... I do. They weren't very good poems. They're better, better music. <laughs> They're simple, but they, what, you know, in our confirmation class, and I, I don't, they don't have confirmation anymore, do they? They simply have the, the tent through uh, or our, our high school program. High school right. program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we, um, our confirmation class was, I believe, the last confirmation class there was for a very long time. Um, and then it started up again. 
and rabbi and we were a rebellious class in the sense we were right in the middle of the of this of the um, uh, Vietnam War. It was 1969. Some of our friends, our high school friends, were going. You know, I graduated. Uh -huh. We were graduating in '71, uh -huh. and so we wrote our own confirmation service from the writings that we did in class. Mm -hmm. Janet Roller wrote a, an, an amazing, I think she's up in Washington right now, an amazing, amazing poem about, um, about interracial relationships that opened up our service. It was all, and Rabbi Kelter refused to pass out the booklets. People had to listen to the service. Mm. Um, interesting. I think the f opening line was something like, hey you, what's, what's, what's up with you guys? Why aren't you listening? And it's like, people just went, whoa. And this was, <laughs> you know, at confirmation during Shavuot at that time, which was a hundred years ago, um, we filled the third congregational church because wow. we didn't go to school and people don't, didn't go to work on Shavuot. So um, it, was, it was quite a memory. In fact, a, 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 not a friend, a classmate of mine, um, Scott Schwager, um, was in my confirmation class. I don't know if he's listening, if he's uh, on now, but um, we reconnected recently. We weren't friends in confirmation class. I was shy and a nerd. He was a nerd and shy too. And so it's like, and he was a boy, so forget it. Um, but apparently he recently wrote the temple, contacted the temple, said, Do, does anyone have a, a copy of our confirmation service? And Charmaine said, well, I don't, but I bet I can tell you who can. So she he put she she put him in touch with me, and I got him a, co a copy of the confirmation service, and we've become friends online, and we talk on the phone sometimes and stuff like that. So it was just, it's it was an amazing experience. It was an amazing experience. You know, we had some people at, in our confirmation class. Of families are still there. Dave Lemmerman was in my class. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Kahn was in my class. There are, I, I, there are 60, I can't even go through them all, but it was an interesting class. It's so inspiring, Jan. You know, we have so many families who, have, who are multi-generation at Temple Israel. Eric yes. was talking about that a little bit before you came on. And it's, it's just so heartwarming to think about your growing up at Temple Israel and continuing to be such an active member there and you know, so precious to so many people. You'll have to go back and look at the comments on Facebook with so many people who are giving you shout outs who, whose oh, children cool. are in your class or who have been some of your adult partners. That's awesome. Don well, Hall Dane says that um, Mrs. Stein's first name was, uh, what was it? I think she did, could it also have been Shirley? Is that, uh, I gotta find that now. I think she was. It, there was a Shirley was, Stein, but I don't think it was Shirley Stein. There were two Steins. Ah, okay, got it. I don't think it was Shirley Stein. I knew her in Mrs. Stein. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> right. So it didn't matter. Who knows right. her first name? Right. I mean, <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Alvey was my second grade teacher. Mrs. Feldman, who became Corinne Van Bommel, was my third grade uh -huh. teacher. Wow. Bar Kelter was my fourth grade. I mean, there was That's so, so cool. many. It was but so nice. So many of those names are people that a lot of us still know, right? Yes, and that's why I'm mentioning them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm hearing it, and, and I'm fascinated. I, I know it's like, oh, we have a fund for this that this family started, or, or you know, yes, after it, it, it really, um, yeah, the living history of the synagogue is really amazing. The fact that your mother is 97, that Harriet is 97, that the temple is turning 100 at the same year that. That, that they're turning, that they're going to be turning 100 is, is yeah. you know, quite something, so. It's, it it's really pretty is. cool. I'm, I'm a walking history book. Um, <laughs> again, don't ask me what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> but I do remember, I have a lot of, a lot of memories um, of, of the temple and how it was and how Kelter was. And, you know, you either loved Kelter or you hated Kelter. I was on the love <laughs> side. Well, when I didn't hate him. <laughs> I feel so lucky that I was able to, you know, overlap with him for a little while and um, before he died. And yes. I'll just never forget, you know, the maybe the kindness that he showed to me when I first came, you know, to Temple Israel. And you know, similar, you know, of course, you know, Jan, you and I have spoken about this so much, but about that transition of leadership from from you to me. Um, yes. And I have such fond memories of that. And um, you know, 
it could have it could have been it could have been a rough transition and it never was for us. I'm glad. And, yeah, I, uh, I didn't want I that. didn't want it to be, mm -hmm. and um, and that's why I took just time off to give you your mm -hmm. space um, and to be respectful of that. And then afterwards, that you had the the good sense and um, <laughs> the um, uh, the ego to ask me to come back to teach, which I appreciated it. And um, because that's one of the things that I love the most in my life, what I've ever done is, is to teach. Um, you know, it's funny at Rabbi Kelter's funeral, Lee Bicell, I you mm -hmm. must know Lee Bicell. Uh -huh. Yeah, Lee Bicell, when I was on staff there years ago, was a student rabbi. Right. He was our student, one of our student rabbis. So I know Lee from way back before he had gray hair and goodness knows before <laughs> I had gray hair. And he, um, he told, he came up to me at, at Rabbi Kelter's funeral and said, you know, Wally always wanted you to be a rabbi. And mm -hmm. I said, it would have been nice had he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know what? I, I mentioned that to my daughter who is a rabbi and you know, Michal. I mentioned that to her once and she said, you know, mom, I think you're doing exactly what you are meant to do, what you're destined to do, and that's to teach. Mm -hmm. She said, you would have been a fabulous rabbi. And in a lot of ways you are, because simply as a community person, people come to you and you have this empathy and you're able to, to, to help and you listen. She says, but you would have hated rabbinical school. And she's <laughs> right. <laughs> Now you work at a rabbinical school. <laughs> exactly, but I'm an office manager, you know, um, but, and that's the good, it's the, it's the, uh, um, the, it's a relationship part of it. But I, I believe I'm a, I, I believe I'm a good teacher. In times I'm an excellent teacher, although it took me years and years and years to realize that. Um, but I'm not a great student. <laughs> So she was right. She's doing what she should be doing. I should, I'm doing what I should be doing. <laughs> Jan, for so many years, you know, you taught children uh, and then you transitioned into teaching adults. Um, what was that transition like for you to, to go from teaching younger kids to, to, to eventually to adults? You know, that's a great question. Um, I found it, I found it simple. Um, a transition. I believe if you, if you've got that teaching gene, you can teach. I've always told you know whenever I've substituted, um, and I look forward to doing that again once we can get back in person. You Absolutely. know, it's like gosh, I haven't been able to get you a lesson plan. I said, don't worry, just tell me the theme. I can take care of it from there. Uh -huh. If you can teach, you can teach. Um, and if you can stay within the parameters, and I don't mean, you know, write three sentences, do this, sign on the board. I'm talking about the concepts. My ideas about being Jewish and being a teacher was less about stuffing the kids' brains with facts as it was, how can I help these children and adults learn to love being Jewish and learn the essence of being Jewish? Um, and if they learn some facts along the way, even even better. Yeah. I think that's so important, um, you know, for, for all teachers and even for parents to remember too, is, you know, uh, parents have expectations when they send their their kids to, to Torah Center or, you know, it's, you know, what did you learn today or, or, or and, and wanting and, in a sense, wanting to hear the facts. Well, you know, right. But I think what Sharon does such an amazing job in in, in the Taurus Center that we have is um, kids come out with that love of, of Judaism, and and I think our our teachers, including you, and you know, in, in the adult education in JJL, I think I think what we do is try to impart that that love of Judaism and. And um, yeah, you'll pick up the facts, like you said. You're you pick them up, you can look them up, right? <laughs> exactly. And I agree with you. I think Sharon does an amazing job. Um, I think you have grown. And I don't say this to be patronizing. I think, you know, when you came to us, you were right out of school. Yes. And you have grown as an educator. And it's wonderful to see. It Thank really is. Much. It's great Thank to see. You. I remember once when I was, I taught my first um adult Hebrew class. There were four students in it. It was beginning Hebrew. We we're just starting. Mm -hmm. And 
And I literally, we were in the youth lounge and we had a table with four students and I was sitting on the other side of the table. Uh -huh. There was one woman who now just recently retired and we're still in contact. Um, she was from New York and she, uh, she was learning, beginning Hebrew and she was learning the letters and we were looking at, a va we were looking at vowels and we were doing the A vowel, the A vowel, two dots, two dots. Right. And I said to her, I said to her, okay. And she volunteered. I said, okay, so if I take my two fingers, now you might not like this, Sharon, but it works with adults and everybody. <laughs> <Okay. you know. laughs> if I take these two fingers and I poke you in the eye, what will you say? She goes, hey, I said, that's right. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, I think one of my gifts, and I always thought it got in my way. I, I didn't think it was a gift. I thought it was something that held me back was my ability to be spontaneous in the classroom mm -hmm. and go with the flow. Mm -hmm. My mother was a very by the book teacher. She had a plan for every minute of the day. Bah, 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 bah. I do too, but you know, we'll see where it takes us. And so mm -hmm. I, my belief was if I couldn't be that kind of teacher, I wasn't a good teacher. So mm -hmm. I, was probably take, I was probably teaching for 25 years before she said to me, Janet, I, I can't do that. I, really, you just can't. My mother, by the way, calls me Janet. Uh, okay. <laughs> And it, it, I it changed my paradigm thinking, oh, that's an advantage I have. And so the kids, as well as the adults, they, you know, if I can go with the flow and be present, which is always a challenge for me, I'm usually thinking ahead or thinking back, <laughs> it, is, um, it serves me well and it serves my students well in the classroom or one-on-one. -on -one. Right, right. Jen, your, your friend since kindergarten, Eileen Schimmel is watching and- <sighs> She says hi. So Eileen, we're glad to have you here. It's nice to have a, a longtime friend of Jan's with us oh, today. Hey, Eileen. <laughs> has that comfort um, that you have in front of people and that spontaneity, has it, have you done any theater or musical theater or anything like that as far as? Uh... Well, I have my degree in theater arts. At, oh, um... I didn't know that. I have my degrees <laughs> yeah. in theater arts too. Oh, so. great. Uh, yeah, I went to Cal State Long Beach. I was on the six year plan because I'd gotten married and kept getting pregnant and losing babies. And Michal was mm -hmm. the product of my fourth pregnancy and she was mm -hmm. high risk. So it's like, Michal, I hope I, if you're there, I hope I'm not embarrassing you. <laughs> but um, she was my gift. And so, um, yeah, so I kept going to school. By that time I was in Cal State Long Beach and then I dropped out and then I went back and I dropped out. I think I was the only performance major who they graduated without doing a main stage production. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I did a, 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 a brown bag production, but um, I'm a much better director than I am an actor, that's for sure. <laughs> and someone just recently heard my CD and contacted me and she and a friend are written a play and he's doing some music and I don't have all the details yet, but she contacted me and she wants to see if I can uh, sing in their play which is nice. I haven't performed in a long time. Very so, nice. Yeah. <laughs> she says it's more like, you know, I don't know if you've heard my CD, but I do a lot of the classics uh -huh. and, and not classical, but classics. And, and she said, it's more like um, the dream scene in, uh, in Fiddler on the Roof. I said, I don't know if I can sing like that, but we'll give it a try. If I can, great. If I can't, we'll find someone else. <laughs> But it was nice to be asked. Are you going to come sweeping in like from a Sarah? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> because the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Very <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah. So Jan, if you sort of, you know, if you if you think you have this long history with the with the congregation, and if you look forward, um, so hopefully, which will, will be a long future ahead of it with the congregation. Any kind of hopes and visions that you have for our community as you look, you know, toward, toward the future? Oh, wow. That's a big question. You know, I'm a very good, I just described this to someone who asked me to serve on a task force. I'm a great worker bee. I'm not a visionary. Mm -hmm. So once someone has a vision and once someone has a plan, I can put it into action and I'm a detailed person and I can, I can make things happen. 
Um, do I have a vision for what, what not be? You know, I look forward to getting back into, it, it's a short term. I, I look forward to getting mm -hmm. back into the, uh, into the building. Uh -huh. I look forward to sharing some hugs. I'm an extrovert, so this has kind of taken its toll. Although it's interesting, a friend just told me recently, a psychic friend of mine, and she was reading and she said, you're not lonely at all. <laughs> said so, no I'm not <laughs> um, because I'm on I'm in contact with people in you know online or I'll, if, if need be I'll make a call I send a lot of cards uh, for people just thinking about you and it helps me feel connected mm -hmm. so do I have any visions um, no I I would I probably do but I'd have to think about it just off the yeah. cuff answering the question um, no, I hope we stay, I hope we are able to, you know, I, let me say, I was born into, and for the longest time, Temple Israel was a classical reform congregation. Mm -hmm. What that meant was very little Hebrew. I mean, if we were doing the Sim Shalom, the rabbi would say, Sim Shalom Tova Uvraha Chein V'chesed V'rachamim, and then do the rest in English. They do a few words in Hebrew, rest in English. Well, I like the Hebrew, I'm used to it, but if when we lose the English, I think we lose people because the meaning, and that's when I work with my students, meaning is so important. Mm -hmm. I'm not just my telling them what it means, but what does it mean to you? Right. Um, have, so I do hope our congregation, even though we are not destined to become or go back to a classical reform, the world has changed. Mm -hmm. I, I do hope that we keep our liberal progressive roots and remember that we're not conservative, we're not conservadox, we're, and, and we have a lot to offer as conservative, uh, pardon me, as progressive Jews. You know, some people believe reform Judaism is the religion of choice. Uh, the Judaism of choice, you pick and choose what you want. And it's really not. It's what is relative, the difference between Kavana and, and Chalacha. We might not, we might not go by Chalacha, the law, because what's Kavana? What is the intention of what was written? And okay. that gives us our standing, but you have to know things first. And, you know, if, choice. and then you can make a logical choice. I don't keep kosher. And there are reasons I don't keep kosher. There are some people, reasons why they do. And I understand why it was probably necessary many, many years ago when there was no refrigeration and there was no, you know, there was no way to, to uh, keep things and, 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 and different foods affected one's body. But as a relatively educated Jew, I can make that decision. And I hope that I want that for our congregation. So, and there are some things I agree with and some things I don't agree with. Do we, can we buy something from the gift shop on Friday night? Can we not buy things from the gift shop on Friday night? Mm -hmm. Where do we stand and why do we make that decision? And don't tell me just because it, it's Shabbat. And <laughs> that's, I grew up with new math. I need an explanation. <laughs> Well, Jan, you'll be good. To, you'll be glad to know that you, you like other congregants, have you know, varied opinions on different issues. Sure, <laughs> You're yeah, you ask me for my hopes. <laughs> varied opinions are that's good. It's what makes us a community, and it, and it absolutely discussion yeah. and and healthy discussion, and where people can can um, agree to disagree, right, on, on certain things. And like you said, it's really about informed choice and our. Our exactly. Educators, our job as a as a community is to share and to to teach all that all that Judaism can be, and then letting our members and, and letting the community find the different pieces that are important to them um, that make Judaism relevant and meaningful for for them and their families. So, you know, a study was done several years ago um, where they took a group of kids and uh, Jewish kids and 
non-Jewish kids, Christian kids. And they, they, asked how they, they asked the Christian kids how they enjoyed, or the non-Jews, how they liked Sunday school. And they loved it. They loved it. Mm-hmm. They asked the, another group, the group of Jewish kids, and they hated it. They oh. hated Sunday school. Sorry, Sharon. But then they followed these kids. It had nothing to do with you. Then right. they, <laughs> Clearly, they were not our students. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why, though. It's, again, it's the why. Then they followed these students when they became adults. Mm-hmm. And the and the and the adults, the Christian adults, went to and I'm using Christian as an overarching term. Mm-hmm. The Christian adults, when they asked about Bible study, because they many of them were still studying, they hated the adult Bible study. They mm-hmm. hated it because it gave them definite. It didn't allow them to think and to question and to wonder. Yet they went to the Jewish students, who continued with. Jewish adults and they loved it because mm. it allowed them to question and ask and to you see Judaism is Judaism is not a kid's religion it just isn't we want to get them hooked in we want to we want them to stay to ask and to find out and see how it's an adult religion and so when we you know it it, it it's so easy or it's I should say it's challenging for a Jewish kids to when you talk about God or when you talk about to get this ethereal thing, you know, they want answers. Right. They want answers and it's hard because and when we don't give them to them as educators, but allow them to explore what they believe and what they think and what they feel, uh, it's good, it's great, but it's it leaves them sometimes wanting. But when they get to be adults, boom, they find something wonderful. Yeah. Well, Jen, you know, you, you, uh, you said you spent a lot of time saying that uh, I can't do that, but here we are after the hour is almost. And, and oh, my goodness, already. I know. We're, we're, Jan we're, was worried she wouldn't know, wouldn't have enough to say. To, so we, it's going to be great, about. Jan. <laughs> and Jen, you. we've had uh, so many people watching today's program. You have so many friends and family out there that are just um, so grateful for all that you have brought to, to their lives. And we also feel so grateful for all the gifts that you've brought to this congregational community. And, um, you know, as a fellow educator, I just want to thank you for your presence and for all the, the lessons that you've taught me and really just countless generations of, not generations, countless, countless students within our, within our community, both, both young and old. And there have been several generations. Benny Barrow's youngest daughter was my student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting to have that experience now, where you know, students of mine are now coming back with their students, and it's their kids. It's pretty weird. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> it is pretty, pretty cool. cool. It's very impactful for sure. Well, Jan, we wrap up our show each, uh, and we wrap up the interviews by. Uh, a series of questions, some quick questions that you'll answer off the top of your head. Um, okay. Were, okay. They were stolen from James Lipton in the actor's studio. So. Oh, I love that show. I haven't seen yeah, it for so, years. Exactly. So, so um, I don't remember what he asked though. As a, as a fellow <laughs> theater person, uh, uh, um, I, I, I figured you'd appreciate these. So this is, this is how James Lipton in the actor's studio would, would end his show and his interviews okay. uh, with some of these questions. So here we go. The first question is, what is your favorite word? One of my favorite words is, is pitzle. Oh. Pitzle to Yiddish, little one, pitzle. What is your least favorite word? Oh, there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> stunk, stunk. I don't like stunk. It's an ugly word. It's an ugly everything, stunk. <laughs> Can you define it? I don't know what stunk is. I mean, uh, the inflection, but. I probably can't define, I, I don't know the, I, I was going to look it up to make sure and I didn't, but. Okay. I, I have a sense from the. <laughs> I'll from put the... it on the Facebook. You're such a stunk. <laughs> <laughs> Not you personally. <laughs> the next one is what sound or noise do you love? Um. I love babies giggling. Wow. And then what sound or noise do you hate? Screaming. Yelling. I, I can't I can't 
take it. I hate conflict. What profession, other than the one you do, would you like to attempt? Oh, that's an easy one. A two, actually. One, I've done it already with about six or seven people. Um, I would like to help people get out of debt. Hmm. I've done that. I have a program that I've used for myself. I've used for some friends and I would love to be able to do that. And if I can't do that, and if I had a lot of money, I'd love to be a philanthropist. Hmm. Nice. And then what profession would you absolutely not like to do? <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to be a garbage collector because I don't like smells and I don't like schmutz and dirt and <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Yiddish today. <laughs> yeah, we've entered into the Yiddish section of our show. So. Um, and last question is, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You're early. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, the show is running late. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jan, it was, it was really, Really, I think our pleasure, and it was so wonderful having you on the show. And, and uh, I, I know I, I took personal just pleasure in getting to know you better and, and getting even a greater sense of your history here at the temple. And and um, I feel like I know, I know you a lot better and I feel like there's still so much more to learn, so. Well, thank you. It's, it was a pleasure when you asked, I, I was so surprised. I was saying, what do I have to say? Um, but I, I just, I appreciate your ask, your questions and you're taking the time. And uh, it was an honor to be, to be included, truly. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Jan. And um, we wish you a wonderful rest of the weekend. And, you know, we are, are honored by your presence. And um, to all of our viewers, thanks for joining us today. It's been really great to see all your comments in the, in the Facebook feed here. Jan, make sure you go back and look at all of them because I couldn't read them all to you. But how do I do, how do, I do that? Do I check Facebook? On, on the Temple Facebook page. Just scroll down. It'll be the first thing right at the top. <laughs> okay. That'd be great. Thank you. I wish you all, both of you and everyone who's watching, a wonderful Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. And we Shabbat will see shalom, everybody um, very soon. Shabbat Shalom. Please join us for services this evening and um, for the weekend ahead. We'll see Gabby you all Gabby is speaking afterward? No, that was last weekend. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> okay, darn it. Thank you. I didn't know. It's okay. Okay, bye. Good. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thanks shabbat again, shalom. Jan. Bye, shabbat Aaron. Shalom. Thanks for joining bye. us. Bye, Sharon. Good seeing you. Likewise. Shabbat Shalom.